PhilHealth, the largest health insurance provider in the Philippines, is in hot water. You've likely heard about the headlines screaming financial distress, unpaid hospital debts, and looming operational struggles. So what's the real story? Let's dive in. PhilHealth, or the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation, was established to ensure that Filipinos have access to quality health care without the financial burden. A noble cause, for sure. But now, the agency is knee-deep in debt, and it's not looking good. According to multiple news sources, including CNN Philippines and the Philippine Inquirer, PhilHealth has a whopping 27 billion pesos in unpaid debts to various hospitals. To be clear, that's not chump change. That's a financial hole so deep it's causing ripples throughout the healthcare sector. You might be thinking, well, why don't they just pay it off? Here's where it gets complicated. Despite having an allocation of 534 billion Philippine pesos in funds, the debts remain unpaid. Sounds fishy, right? It of course begs the question, where is all that money going? Several Senate hearings and journalistic investigations are already underway, but concrete answers are still elusive. Now, you can imagine how this debt affects not just the big healthcare facilities, but the small community hospitals that heavily rely on PhilHealth's payments. We're talking about hospitals teetering on the edge of bankruptcy, folks. Many of these medical centers have had to cut down services or even face the threat of shutting down entirely, as reported by Rappler and the Philippine News Agency. Imagine being sick and finding out the nearest hospital has closed due to financial issues. That's the grim reality we're staring at. But okay, let's shift gears and look at the hospitals and healthcare providers who are directly affected by this issue. According to the Philippine News Agency, private hospitals are on the edge, waiting for PhilHealth's debt settlement. And the stakes are incredibly high. Bear in mind, hospitals are not just structures made of bricks and mortar. They are intricate systems requiring cash flow to pay staff, purchase equipment, and maintain operations. When they don't get paid, services get cut, staff get laid off, and patients suffer. But what happens when these debts go unpaid for an extended period? Simple, hospital shutdowns. And if you think it's an exaggeration, reports from the Inquirer have noted that hospital shutdowns due to unpaid PhilHealth debts are a real and immediate threat. Now, combine that with the current global health crisis, and it's not hard to see how the entire healthcare system could be upended. Additionally, the unpaid bills create an imbalance in the healthcare sector, leading to what the Philippine Star termed as financial distress for many healthcare providers. When hospitals are financially distressed, it's not just the hospitals that suffer. It's the nurses, the doctors, the technicians, and, most importantly, the patients who need critical medical care. Stella Quimbo, a Philippine lawmaker, recently asked PhilHealth to suspend premium contributions, as reported by Rappler. It's a desperate plea to relieve some of the immediate financial burdens facing the system. But it also brings up an important point. Can you expect citizens to keep paying for a service that is failing to deliver on its most basic promises. Now, let's be realistic. The effects of PhilHealth's financial troubles will not be confined to the healthcare sector alone. They'll spill over into other areas like employment, economic stability, and even national morale. It's a cascading effect that can reverberate throughout the country, impacting even those who may not directly rely on PhilHealth for their medical needs. All right, now that we've outlined the gravity of the situation, let's focus on how the government is responding to it. Now, PhilHealth has indeed vowed to pay off its debt to private hospitals in 90 days, according to CNN Philippines. Sounds like a good start, right? But before we give them a good old pat on the back, let's remember, a promise is only as good as its fulfillment. Critics are skeptical, to say the least. The Philippine Senate, as revealed through the Senate website, has been probing into these matters, and they're not liking what they're seeing. Accusations of corruption, inefficiency, and lack of transparency have been thrown around. The government's response also shows a lack of long-term planning. Paying off current debts is important, yes, but what about the structural changes needed to prevent this from happening again? Where are the safeguards to ensure that healthcare providers are paid on time in the future? Now, moving on to public sentiment, people are more than a little uneasy. Rappler reported that private hospitals are on the brink of bankruptcy and citizens are worried. Your average Juan and Maria are asking, if the hospitals close, where do we go? 
Public opinion is turning, and the confidence in PhilHealth is dwindling. And it's not just about the hospitals. PhilHealth has been urged by lawmakers like Gordon to clean up corruption before hiking up member contributions, as cited by PhilStar. It's an essential point. How can people trust an institution with more money when it hasn't properly managed the funds it already has? Public trust is a fragile thing. And once it's broken, it's incredibly difficult to rebuild. In a nutshell, the government's response has been a mix of promises and half measures, but it's far from solving the root issues. Public sentiment is at an all-time low, and people are beginning to question not just PhilHealth's effectiveness, but its very credibility. In the next part, we'll examine the possible routes to a resolution, including both short-term fixes and long-term changes that could potentially save PhilHealth and, by extension, the Philippine healthcare system. So, the million-dollar question, or should I say billion-peso question, remains, what's the way forward? And this is where we need to get real about solutions. While promises and pledges are nice, they aren't going to cut it. A comprehensive roadmap is essential to dig PhilHealth out of its deep financial hole and rebuild public trust. Firstly, let's talk about immediate relief. One feasible approach, as suggested by Business Mirror, is for the government to infuse immediate capital into PhilHealth. Now look, I get it, throwing money at a problem doesn't usually fix it. But in this case, immediate funding could stabilize the collapsing healthcare providers and ensure they continue essential services. It's like a band-aid solution, quick and effective for now, but not long-lasting. But here's where it gets tricky. That immediate relief needs to be paired with rigorous audits and oversight. Otherwise, we're just pouring water into a leaking bucket. Transparency needs to be the name of the game. Public financial reports, third-party audits, and perhaps even a watchdog agency would be crucial components of this immediate relief phase. Now, let's look at long-term fixes. Many experts in the field, including those cited by Rappler, believe that an overhaul of the entire PhilHealth system might be the only way forward. This could include digitizing to reduce paperwork and speed up payments, stricter regulations on how funds are used, and new protocols for anti-corruption measures. The Philippine Red Cross has even suggested that PhilHealth collaborate with them to set up a system that can easily validate claims and payments, thereby eliminating fraudulent activities. And there's more to consider. Policy changes might be needed to redefine the relationship between PhilHealth and healthcare providers. Newsinfo.inquirer.net reported that hospitals have been saying for years that the reimbursement rates from PhilHealth are not sustainable. So, a complete reassessment of how PhilHealth interacts with these institutions is a must. And lastly, let's not forget the role of public engagement. PhilHealth needs to be accountable not just to the government, but also to the citizens it serves. Town halls, surveys, and open forums could be excellent platforms for understanding public sentiment and incorporating their feedback into policy changes. If we zoom out from the immediate crisis facing PhilHealth and the Philippines, it's easy to see that this issue resonates on a global scale. Let's be honest, the healthcare system is a complex beast, no matter where you are in the world. And the problems we're seeing with PhilHealth could be a canary in the coal mine for similar systems worldwide. Take the United States, for example. They have Medicare and Medicaid, which are also publicly funded healthcare programs. These programs, too, have had their share of financial and corruption-related problems. According to several reports, billions are lost every year due to fraud and wasteful spending. That's money that could have been used for better healthcare services. The fact of the matter is, universal healthcare, while an admirable goal, is rife with challenges. When a healthcare system, funded by public money, faces financial and ethical issues, it not only weakens public trust, but also begs the question how sustainable are such models in the long run? So what can we learn from the PhilHealth crisis? Well, for starters, the need for robust governance and transparency cannot be overstated. No matter how noble the intention behind a public service is, it's only as good as its implementation. Secondly, it shows us that keeping the public involved and informed is not just an option, but a necessity. Public scrutiny can act as an additional layer of audit, ensuring accountability. But anyway, do let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.